I've noticed quite a few personalities, popular personalities, who were represented themselves as atheists or infidels of some sort, who of late have come to believe in God and the supernatural simply because they said they discovered the devil, they discovered Satan. They saw evil on a level that couldn't be explained by natural man. And I'm going to tell you something. Right now, Satan is winning. Satan is being successful in what he's doing. And uh, God letting him. The Bible says God will let him until he gets tired of letting him. And then he's going to come back and set up a kingdom that has no end. But Satan's being successful. And if you go back into the book of Genesis, you see all of the things Satan is attacking. See, Satan hates God. He was once an angel covering the throne of God. Not an angel. He was once a cherub covering the throne of God. And he wanted to punish God, and he still wants to punish God. And the way he does that is through us and through God's creation because he obviously can't do anything to God himself. So the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So what has Satan done? In the 1840s and 50s, he came up with the concept of evolution and said, no, God didn't create the heaven and the earth. And then the Bible tells us that in Genesis that God made man in his likeness and in his image. God made him spoke him into existence, brought him forth from the dust to the ground. But evolution comes along and tells us, no, God didn't make man in his image. And then we find that the Bible says God made them male and female. And what do we have today? Of all the ridiculous things, Satan wants to take the male and the female and confuse the genders and create multiple genders. When the Bible's clear, God just made two genders. And then it tells us there in the book of Genesis that God created the seeds uh, of the field under the forest. And he wanted, and he caused every tree to bring forth after its kind. Now, what do we have today? We have genetic modification. You have to be careful where you buy seeds for your garden, because they say that God didn't make the seeds perfect. He didn't make them immune to our pesticides and our herbicides. And so we're going to change those seeds so that they are now immune. And also they say he didn't make the fruit big enough. He didn't make the fruit sweet enough. He didn't. And so they change and alter through genetic modification the very food that we eat. And people wonder why there's more sickness and more disease. That's just part of it. And then he told them to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and every creeping thing. So what are we told today? We're told that Mother Earth, Mother Earth is more important than man upon it and that the population needs to be limited to save Mother Earth. But I'm going to tell you, I take dominance over the earth. I have cattle, I have goats, I have chickens, and I have dogs. And I'll go out hunting, and I'll go out fishing. I employ these things for my benefit. Now, I do it respectfully. In other words, I want to perpetuate upon this earth, not only my life, but the life of my children. To, I don't want to destroy anything. I don't want to pollute anything. I don't want to make anything. It's, it's my garden. The whole earth is my garden. So I want to keep it. But I, I, the fruit of it is for my benefit. And then he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Now that means have lots of babies. So what did we invent? We invented birth control. Why? To limit the population. And today there's a movement to cut down the population. I saw where some geniuses said the earth should have no more than 100 million people on it. Now that means that, more, that if the rest of the world was wiped out, They'd still have to wipe out over two-thirds of this country in order to come up with a population of elites that they desire. But he says, be fruitful and multiply 
and replenish the earth. They want population reduction. Why? Because Satan is inspiring those things. And then the Bible tells us that he planted a garden eastern in, in Eden, and he placed the man there to dress it and to keep it. So if you want an occupation that's God-ordained, God-given, farming is the closest thing to godliness that you can get. Farming is what God designed. And if you can't farm, having a garden, raising what you eat, raising a portion of what you eat, raising a single tomato plant and eating tomatoes for three or four months out of the year. That's a godly thing to do. But what do we have today? There's a movement in this country to come against even backyard gardening. They say it contributes to the pollution in the atmosphere. Now, everything that God created there in Genesis 1, everything that he did, Satan has come against it. He's wanting to twist and warp the, the whole world. And then the Bible says that God created a male and female, and he says that a man should leave his father and mother and should cleave unto his wife only. So God made one man and one woman. God didn't make Adam with two wives or three wives or four wives. He made him with one wife, and he made them to cleave together for life. So God created sex, and he created it to have children and to have fun. And he created one man and one woman for that purpose. What do we have today? We have the whole world telling us that monogamy and marriage are old-fashioned. And so we have people going out and copulating with multiple partners, opposite sex partners, totally in contradiction to what God created. And homosexuality and lesbianism is running rampant, even in the churches today. So what do we have? We have a devil that hates God, wants to destroy everything God has created, everything God has made, and wants to set up his own kingdom in God's place. Now, he's not, he's not winning with me. He's not winning with many of you. But as a whole, the number of faithful believers per capita is much smaller today than it was 25 years ago. It's much smaller today than it was 50 years ago. Uh, and it's continuing to shrink. The number of true and faithful believers is getting smaller every day. And there's coming a point when God is going to say, this is no longer profitable. I'm going to put an end to it. He's going to bring a judgment on this world. And I think we already see some of it coming down. And he's going to put an end to our societies. And he's going to set up a kingdom of peace and joy with no end. So choose sides. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You decide, or have you already decided? If you're looking at pornography, you've already decided which side you're on. It's not God's. If you're running around chasing the opposite sex, you're not on God's side. If you're into alcohol and drugs and you're uh, living a dishonest, unhonorable life, You've not chosen God's side. You've chosen the devil's side. So choose you this day whom ye may serve. And that's all I've got to say for the day. 